Okay, we're gonna look at the new uh, Wayfair this morning. We're gonna show you how to operate things, how to maintain things. We're gonna pop the hood so we can talk about the engine a little bit. Show you a couple of things you can check. Lift the hood here, we got a hood prop. And we're gonna rest that down there. So we got the hood propped up. We're gonna go left to right here. I got a cabin air filter that's inside on the passenger side. Uh, things we want to check. We got the def fluid here. We uh, we want to check that before our major trip. You do have a gauge inside the cluster. Diesel exhaust fluid is that an additive that's uh, injected in the exhaust to help clean up the atmosphere, the bad particles in the exhaust. You can get this at all your WalMarts, Auto Zones, WalMarts, and you can also get it at the truck stops when you're out on the road. So uh, just fill that up before you major trip. We got our air cleaner here. We have a place that we can jump start our chassis battery hook our positive here the negative goes on the frame right over here on the right and you can jump start the battery which is located under the driver's floorboard and that's where they relocate the battery the master cylinders here and the uh, reservoir the brake reservoirs here always use a clean container of that if you ever need to add to that and you can see that through the container here the washer fluids right below us uh, what you're looking at right here is the, actually the oil filter. And you want to change your oil on this every 20,000 miles on the full synthetic. They run a mobile one in this. And uh, take that to your Mercedes dealer and get the service done. And that way they can hook up the scanner to it, check for any uh, recalls, any kind of safety bulletins that might be coming down the line, okay? So we're going to lower this down. Good that drop down. So you have a step here for getting up to clean the ice and wash the windshield if you need to. There's a place here on the on the bumper. We can actually pop this out and you'll be able to see that we can hook a, a tow hook in here. The tow hook is actually located in the driver's uh, or in the passenger floorboard. And so that's for towing up on a flatbed or out of a uh, icy spot or muddy spot if you need to. But that's a good place to tow the rig you'll have a place to contact and hook up to. Uh, so we have fog lights on this one. I've got a wrap that goes all the way around the hood and around the front end of this. This is called Diamond Shield. This protects you from rock chips and bugs. You get bugs on that, you want to get those off as soon as you can. Uh, so we're going to uh, be able to move the mirrors in if we need to, if we need to park in a tight spot, parking garage or so forth. Now the tires all the way around, we have aluminum Alcoa rims on this, and we're 61 PSI in the front, and then we're 58 PSI on the rear duals. And you can see on the rear tires, I have a valve extender here on the outside tire. This one goes to the inside tire, so a customer uh, could add tire pressure monitor sensors on these valve stems since they're hard metal. So that's always a good idea if you wanna get those. We're gonna look at some fuses. I've got chassis fuses right here below the seat. Now these are turn signal, horn, lights, those type of things that are here. You've also got more of these below the passenger floorboard and that below that panel. I'm gonna show you that. And we're also gonna be able to look at those in the owner's manual. Now the owner's manual is a hard copy owner's manual like the old days. We can also look on our big screen here in the center console and the manual is available there when we're stopped and stand still. We can actually look at that and look up things. Your diesel fill is here. Okay. And uh, so you got a full tank of diesel right now. Uh, we got the auto position on the lights. And there's a little courtesy light that you see up top here that comes on. The fog lights are here. So when I have the headlights turned on here in the manual position, I can press that left button and that'll be the fog light. Uh, the one on the right, just ignore that now. That's uh, that's for a European tail light that would be on there if you had a certain uh, light design. The battery for the chassis is actually located right here below the floorboard. So you'll see the battery symbol there, and that's how this is taken up. This mat is taken up, and you'll be able to access that, or a mechanic would. We have memory seats on this. Uh, we have three positions. I always recommend that maybe you take the the third position and make it the swivel position. So what we're gonna do is run the seat forward. We'll also run the seat back up. 
So in order to swivel this seat, we have to put the brake handle down. It will fold down the emergency brake. And I'm going to store that. I'm going to hit MIM and 3, and that's going to put this in that position. So now I can reach down below the front of the seat, hit the lever, and boom, I can rotate the seat. And now we can utilize this area up here as part of our uh, coach living area. Okay, so, but um, I'm going to move it back to a, a usable position for the driver. I don't want to go too far back because I do have a slide out there, so before we run the slide out out, we have to make sure the seat is forward as well, just to clear the seat. So I'm going to put that in, in play right there. Okay, so let's move right along. This coach uh, has LP tank on it, so we utilize LP for a lot of different things. We have a range top inside that we run. Uh, we also uh, heat our water with the LP. We, we can run some other devices, but uh, you can see the tank. This is the gauge for it. The tank is showing full, so we have a gauge inside that will read that. I'm going to open up the valve now so that I can use my appliances. So this is the shutoff valve. So if you get a, uh, an alarm inside, uh, off the LP alarm, or you smell LP, the safest thing you can do is come outside the door and shut this off, just like I'm doing now. Okay, I'm going to open it up real slow. And when you get it filled, your propane will be filled here. And they're going to vent it there. And that's how they know when they get to this level. On the liquid, you'll get liquid out of here. They know to stop their filling. And this is also an overfill protection valve here, so it can't possibly be overfilled. But uh, when we get down to our gauge, and we'll be able to read that inside on the gauge, uh, when we get down to say 10%, I'd start looking around for some more LP. So you see the water coming out here. This is condensation from our air conditioner. We actually have a pump built into the air conditioner. And when we're humid like we are today, the humidity is gonna drain out of the hose and not come on top of the coach and run down the sides and make black marks. So that's pretty cool that Tiffin's done that. I'm gonna open this door. This is our door that we actually hook our sewer hose up to. Now you need to get yourself a good sewer hose that has a right angle adapter, preferably one that's clear on one end. And we can hook up to right here into the sewer connection. And then we're gonna bring that out into our sewer. And when you dump these tanks, you wanna do with a black first, which is on the right. Uh, once that's dumped out, shut it, come behind it with a gray, and open the gray like this and let that water run out as well, okay? And I'm done with that. I do have a cap that I can use. Also, you can use this. You can grab it like this and rotate it up. So you can always hook the hose up and go outside the door instead of down below. And that's good if you've got a single dump station at a campground that everybody's using. So you can just pull up there and dump. Uh, we're going to pop this back on so what you're seeing in the background over here is a slide-out controller. And that slide-out controller is for this slide. It's electric. It does have an override mode on it right here. It's a manual override. If you can't run that slide in and out with the switches on the inside for some reason, you can come out here and put this in manual mode. And a lot of times that will take care of any computer problem you might have with the synchronization on the motors. There's two motors, top, left, and right. And so this thing computerized, it keeps them in sync as we run that slide in and out. But that's a backup way of running that out. We're going to go ahead and put this in. I'm going to go ahead and dump. You always want to use chemical in your black tank on the inside, toilet chemical. You want to use RV paper that's rated for RVs when you're using this. Um, I don't have any chemical in the toilet right now. And so these are fresh, clean tanks that have been fresh, uh, leak tested. And so... We just want to make sure we get the cap on the here. We don't want to lose anything going down the road. You can store your sewer hose in here as well. Just be careful of the harnesses that are in here. We don't catch one. Tighten that up. And I always reach down on the door and just give it a good tug after we shut it to make sure things. I'm going to grab the keys. We're going to open that up. That's actually a gravity fill. So what I can do is take my... Uh, I can take my water hose when I want to fill up the tank on board and I can put it right in the opening here and just fill up the fresh water tank. When you get enough water as far as what you need, a third of a tank, two thirds, whatever you're going to be doing, uh, just go ahead and put the cap back on it. That's a vent right there on the right side of it. We'll make sure we're locked back up here. We're going to talk about the wet bay area. Tiffin does a pretty good job of laying out the wet bay. And uh, we're going to bring our city water in. It's going to come up through the opening. And we're going to hook to the bottom 
connection. We don't want to hook to the top one right now. We're going to hook to the bottom one. Suggested that you get a right angle adapter for this and that way your hose uh, coming in does not actually have to bend and kink like this. So you'll get a kinked hose. And also you want to use a regulator on that water hose coming in. So that's going to be a drinking hose, a potable water hose. And you're going to put a regulator back at the faucet, similar to what I've got at the building over here. That's going to regulate the pressure about 50 PSI. So you bring it in, you hook it up, turn on the water, you've got pressure to all your taps inside. Now this water is also going to go through a whole house filter that you see right here. Uh, that's going to be filtered, that's going to be filtered when it uh, goes into the city water, into all the lines in the coach, but it's also when I have a city water hooked up, hooked up here, I want to go to city position on the valve and that's going to pressurize everything, but if I want to fill it from this opening as well, you can do it on the gravity field, but you can also do it through here. I move this lever down to dry, now the water's going to come in here and go into the fresh water tank as well. So that's also being filtered. So once I get as enough, enough water as to what I want, I can go back to city. Or if I'm just going to run off the tank, I'm going to go to dry and I'm going to just turn on the valve like this. It primes up. You heard the pump come on. It ran and it shut off. So now I've got my water pressure here and uh, I'll have hot and cold water out here. Now while I'm out here, I'm also going to run the hot side and just make sure there's no air in that. You see a little bit of air coming out as it sputters. And that's a good way to eliminate the air in it. That makes our water heater run so much better. The water heater on this is a tankless water heater. Uh, it's actually a, an on-demand water heater. And they call it tankless, but uh, it requires that you have no air in the hot line and also that we have power turned on. We're going to talk about that on the other side when we go. There's one more position up here, or one more uh, inlet. That is a, a Santee flush, which is a sewer flush. So one of the things I can do on my black tank over here is when I got my hose hooked up over there, I can run a garden hose into this opening, in this connection, or maybe a pocket hose that I dedicate to the tank flush. And so I put that on there, I open up the black valve, and then I turn on the water, and let that flush out my black tank. So I might do that for about 10 minutes or so or until it clears up on the sewer hose. So it clears up on the sewer hose and then I'm good. So do that at least one time while you're at the campsite, while you have the uh, flush in the sewer dump available for you. There's a couple of connections in here as well. Now you have a pump switch here, but you also have a couple of switches indoors. So that's just for convenience. Um, the water pump is over here and we can hook up cable TV here at a park. Most parks offer cable TV. Carry your coax with you, run it through the floor, hook up to here and you got free cable TV. So those, those times when you're in the mountains or you're in the trees or you can't get satellite reception on top or good TV reception, you wanna get cable. That way you'll have something you can watch and entertain yourself. Uh, tripod satellite, you can also hook a satellite outside in a clearing, hook up to that and we can run that to a satellite receiver inside. Now there's some other stuff in here that you're seeing. We actually have low point drains right here, right and left. So those allow us to drain the coach uh, for the winter time or if we just want to drain out the bad water, we can open those up and they're just strictly going to drain to the ground. Okay, we'll open up all the faucets inside to get air in the lines and that'll help move the air or the water out of these lines. There's one more line that's facing us here. Now I have a, a winterizing hose I'm going to put in here. It's a section about three foot long. It hooks on the end of this and so you can actually winterize your coach with RV antifreeze. You can hook it up to here, run this down into a, a, a two or three gallons of RV antifreeze, turn on your pump, and that's going to uh, draw that up into the lines and it'll fill up the hot and cold lines and, and uh, that's how we winterize these coaches. Of course, there's one thing we want to do inside is we want to bypass the water heater. I'll show you those valves inside. But uh, that's a good way of winterizing or take it to your RV, your local RV dealer to uh, have that done and watch them the first time. Uh, do it and you can get some experience at doing that. Uh, we also on the water pump there's a filter on the inlet side of it right here and uh, that'll catch any debris that might be in your freshwater tank uh, when you're pumping water from that. I'm going to tie this up by the way just like that. Okay, so, uh, far 
hours. All right, so we're moving on. We're gonna shut this. Oh, by the way, that little opening there that you see, that is actually for sewer hose storage. So tipping, they give you a, a container to push your hose up in there and then put the lid back on it. So we have a place to actually store our sewer hose. If you can't put it in there, just put it in a bag or container and store it right here in the side of the wet bay that, where it's real convenient. Sometimes you can't get the hoses uh, into the, the places on here that you need to. I'm going to turn that so, so that I can... You can also put a lock on that if you want to. Okay. I'm open the top here. This is strictly uh, storage. And you can see it runs all the way across. This door will prop open at the top. There's some latches for that. And uh, you can see these are props for the bed. This is a twin bed model. So the end of the bed can actually lift up and those are the props for the bed. A lot of good storage in here. We can store chairs, barbecue grill, things that we might want to take along with us that are too large for the inside. But we have plenty of storage space. So I've got my 30 amp cord here coming out. And here at the business, here at the dealership, we use a surge guard. These are a good brand. Uh, these actually check for high voltage, low voltage. They'll check for surges that might be coming down the line. They'll actually prevent a surge. They check for open neutral, ground, bad, reverse wiring, all of that. And if it doesn't have good voltage or frequency coming in, or any of those other items, it'll actually stop power from coming into here. So this is a good surge guard and uh, power uh, miswiring preventer there. But uh, that's what we use for protection, so those are really good to get for an owner. It actually comes into a transfer switch that you see here, and the transfer switch does have a little bit of surge guard protection built into it, but that's pretty much uh, about all it does. It's pretty basic, but this switches you between the shore power and generator. So when I turn on the generator, it takes priority and it switches to that power. You can actually run your shore cord out and through the little porthole that you see here, and then you can slide the cover to close it up, just to keep out the bugs. Coming around the back side, we have our backup camera. And we'll be able to see that uh, when we're going slow. They don't want you to look at it when you're driving real fast, so they disable that uh, when you pick up speed out of the parking lot. Uh, but we got their hitch here, and we also got our seven-way round. So we'll be able to uh, tow a car, get the exhaust from the generator. It's just the other side of the storage, and you can see it goes all the way across. So we call this pass-through storage for big items if you have fishing rods or something really long too that works really well. I'm gonna open this up. In here I've got my LP tap for using my LP for a grill. So I can actually pull that down. I can take this into the hose, this extension. I can pull that back, hook that up, and now I can hook this end up to a grill. I may need to adapt this connector to my grill. This has just got this other connection on it. But then I can turn on the LP like this. Now I have LP flowing so I can run my grill outside, but I could also run a heater in the winter if I needed to, a furnace that runs off of LP. And there we go. So I'm gonna put the dust caps back on these. You can see that right there. Just keep the bugs in the dirt now. Do the same with this one. And I'm going to hang these up inside. There's a little hook right here. Let's just keep those out of the way for storage. And also there's some lights in here. Uh, you have some courtesy lights in the compartments. When you go to the number two position, that's gonna put it in motion sensor. And so we shut the door, that light will go back off. You do turn these lights on at the door on the main panel. So you'll see a compartment light switch there. And just going through things, we have our furnace here at the top. I always recommend that you use a dauber guard on this to keep the mud daubers and the bugs from building the nest up inside the furnace. But this is our exhaust and intake. Now here's the Truma water heater, named after Harry Truman. Um, what we have is a power switch. When I turn on the power, I wanna see a green light here at the top. And like I told you a second ago, you wanna run all the hot faucets just for a little bit to get the air out. Now one thing that we have on here is actually a drain. So when I pull this down, you want to make sure it's not under pressure. Take the pressure off. You also want to make sure the water's cooled down before you drain it. When I pull this down, this acts as a drain. So the water's going to drain out of this onto the ground. But there's also a filter in here. 
So that filter catches any particles that might come from the fresh tank or anywhere else. And uh, so it's a filter, a screen filter that's in here. It's about this long. It fits up in there this way. But it comes out when you pull down the, the lid or pull down the, uh, the uh, valve. And also, uh, this is a pressure relief. Uh, see how much pressure's on that. This is a pressure and temperature relief valve here. Um, so I've got power on. I've got my OP turned on on the other side, and I'm getting the air out of my water line, the hot water line, and when I go inside. So I'll turn the controls. The controls are actually inside on this. And I have two modes of operation, either comfort mode or eco mode. So we'll talk about those inside when we turn it on. And I'll show you that. But I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on it here. I've got power on. And we'll operate that from inside. I'm going to look at my generator. This is a, a diesel generator. 3200 watts. You can see it puts out about 26 amps. So it's not quite the 30 amps that we have coming into shore power. So I want to check the oil before I run any generator. So I'm going to pull the dipstick. There's my oil. This is a 15W40 weight of oil. If you ever need to add to the oil, you can add some here. It actually only holds 0.7 quarts of oil. So when you get to a 20 hour, that's going to be the break-in period on the hour meter. So once we get 20 hours on this generator, we need to do the service on it. Take it to your RV dealer, have them change the oil. You can also change it yourself. There's actually a, a cap right here. And we can take that cap off and it drains straight down underneath. Now I have to check the hours inside because when they get close to 20 here at the dealership, we go ahead and do them. So let me check. You may not even need to do it because we've already done it. I think it had like 18 or 19 hours, so very close. And I'm going to show you what to do inside on the hour meter if it comes up and tells you to check the oil because we've already done the oil change, I believe, on this. Uh, so we also have an air filter here. That does not usually need to be done at 20 hours. This is a fuel filter and if the engine's running out here there's no start and stop button but if the engine is running and we want to stop the generator we can grab that lever and go to the left that's going to choke off the gas to it or the diesel and that's going to stop the engine that's actually an oil strainer we don't have an oil filter on this but that's an oil strainer you'll see that in your manual they talk about doing that later on when once you get a certain amount of hours on the generator you can pull that out and just clean that oil strainer so it doesn't have an oil filter. Now if I'm out here doing service on this engine, this is a lockout button. I can actually pop that out like that. This is going to prevent anybody from starting the generator inside when I'm trying to do maintenance on the engine and don't have oil in this. And so I've already done it. We're going to pop that back in and we're ready to go. Now remember, this only puts out about 26 amps. So not quite the 30 amps. So I have two things inside that use a lot of power. I have air conditioner on top of the roof and I have a microwave. So in the hot weather, you if you're trying to run both of those items at the same time, you may or may not be able to run them at the same time. You may be tripping the breaker. So what you're gonna wanna do is pick and choose when the weather's real hot because in the hot weather, the current goes up and the voltage goes down. So you can see we're kinda, we get limited as to what we can run. But try running it and if the generator shuts off or bogs down or you trip a breaker, then you knew you got to pick and choose between the microwave for 10 minutes or whatever and then go back to using the air conditioner. That's the best way to do it. Let's pop the lid back on. We always want to run this with the lid on. And that's how it cools the best because it's air and oil cooled. So we got an outside TV. This is on a swivel. We can pop it out and articulate it where we want it to go. Now I've got the, uh, the remote inside, but there is a power button here in the front in the center. So right now, uh, this is my local TV. This is the, the digital TV I'm picking up in the area. Uh, we have a lot of stations here in Dallas-Fort Worth. But uh, every time you go to a different area, you need to scan that area for the TV channels. I'll show you that later. I'm gonna press this and turn it off. Customer can always add a sound bar down below. Uh, give you more projection of sound when you're outside under your awning using your awning which by the way i'm going to run out i've got a, a button right here at the bottom that i can press on my awning control you need to make sure the key is turned off the ignition key it will not run it out when you run it out now i've got a pole in the way so i'm going to stop that before it gets out 
You also have a lock on the TV door. Now this awning has several things on it. It has speakers on the end of it. So when we've got our stereo turned on, I'm gonna stop that just right there. When we got our stereo on and we got these speakers here turned on, which I believe they're that are like, wow, this is real music. Yeah. Um, we can actually and have so sound now you're kind of learning something new also. So I've got speakers. I've also got a light, an LED light on this. How it would change if you're so when I go to the light, I can turn on my LED lights on the awning. So there we go. So one more thing we have on this awning is a motion detector. So if I have this out and the wind comes up, uh, it's going to shake it, and the awning's going to run in by itself. The good rule of thumb is never leave the awning out, never leave it unattended. Uh, if you leave and go or eat at a restaurant or whatever, uh, just err on the side of caution, okay? And we want to check that sensor once in a while. Just give it a good shake and make sure that it goes in. This compartment here has a couple of things in it. We have our central vac system. And you can see this is where the bag hooks onto our vacuum system. It just slips on just like that. There's a couple extra in the, here in the package. I'll show you how that works inside. We're going to put the lid back on it. This is a cover for the windshield. So this comes out and uh, we'll be able to hook that up on the windshield. I'll show you the hooks inside where that goes. And this is the inverter. So a lot of these coaches have a, a big inverter like this. So the inverter takes battery power and it converts the 12 volt battery power that we have right here. These are, these are the house batteries. So these run everything on the coach on the 12 volt side. And uh, these, this inverter takes 12 volt power and makes 120 volts for you. So you can run things inside. You can usually run your microwave, uh, your TVs. You can run uh, all of your satellite equipment, anything. And there's some outlets inside that are also powered up. Now these have caps on them. You see the caps here and here. So those do take distilled water. So uh, maybe two times a year, uh, equally spaced. Just take those caps off and check the distilled water in the batteries since these are lead acid batteries. And uh, they do have caps on them that can be filled up. We just come into our coach. And so what we want to do is, the first thing I do is look at voltage. So I'm going to turn on my display here on the main screen. There's my house voltage everything looks good 14.4 that's normal I'm looking at my tanks fresh water is totally full I can let some of that water out I don't need that much uh, gray and black I need to empty out a little bit of the gray water I still got from testing LP is full but uh, we can also turn on our lights here the, the light master and if uh, if you want them all turned on what you can do is press and hold the light master and that'll turn every light in here on so that's a new feature that they've got Going back to this, one of the first things that we're going to do is uh, we're going to run, this, run the jacks down. So we need to level the coach up. So if I've got the ignition on, then the ignition has to be off. We're going to look over here on the uh, Bigfoot control unit. When I turn on power here, you can see the, the LEDs all light up, everything. So the yellow lights tell me that I'm low on the front and I'm low on the right side. But what we're going to do is hit auto level and we're gonna let it auto level the coach. It's gonna run the jacks down and level us up according to what you see on the display. And when we get this coach fully level and the jacks are all set and it's leveled us up, you'll get a solid green foot picture LED here in the middle. It's got a level sensor that's built into the system. Okay, so it tried to level the front end and it couldn't do it because I'm on quite a slope here so when it does that, you're going to see all these lights flash. There we go. So I wanted you to actually see this because if you get in a place that you can't level up properly, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get lights that flash. Normally you get a solid foot here in the center. But since we're doing this, now the way I would correct this is I would take a couple of blocks and put up underneath the front jacks. And that will give me enough to lift up and not extend those jacks completely to where it's giving me an excess slope is what's happening so but anyway that's how you work that we'll just turn off power this is good enough for what we're doing and we're going to run this slide out 
So when you look over here and I go to the slide position, there it is right there. You can see it highlighted. I'm going to press that. This gives me a picture of the coach and I can extend and retract this slide out that I have. Now, you do have to have the key, you do have the engine back on in order to run the slide out. But you're also going to hear the alarm for the jacks because I do have the jacks down. Just That's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. And we're going to extend. So I'm going to press and hold the extend button. Make sure everything's out of the way. Nothing behind the slide. Nothing outside that's uh, going to be a problem. So I'm running the slide out. I'm going to run it out until it stops. It's going to get all the way to the wall. And there we go. I can let off the button. I can go back to home position. And now I can turn off the switch for the engine. So now we're, we're ready to camp. So let's take a look at this one more time out here. So I can look at lights. Any of the lights that you see here that have an arrow on it up and down, I can dim that light. So I press and hold that and then I can draw that light up or down. You can see it going up and down there. So just they're all uh, adjustable. Turn off the awning light. And also, you know, I can turn off all the lights in one place. There's a master light switch here as well as in the bedroom. I have bedroom and bath lights here as well, so I can go individually turn those on if I need to or all the lights. So also what you're looking at here, I have a tank heater on the tanks. Uh, the tank heater is for cold weather operation. I can turn that on, keeps the tanks thawed out. Uh, I'm going to go to the utility screen. The utility screen tells me a couple of things. I can go to screen settings and set up the power save mode and therefore it could, the screen will go blank after so many minutes. I can also change my default page and the way it looks and I can also go back and check the wireless switches that are in here. It looks like they're all connected and I'll show you this is a wireless connection here, the one in the bedroom, the one in the back and they're talking to this thing wirelessly but they just have power coming into them and they're all connected that's good so we're going to go back to here we can also do diagnostics and so looking at the diagnostics we can see all the circuits that are turned on in green that helps us to decide uh, if a circuit is working or not but um, we're going to go back to home you saw your awning controls you got your stereo here now this stereo will play the tv audio through it as well so when i turn that on for radio i'm going to turn this down a little bit I've got three different zones. I've got zone A here in the front, B is outside, and in zone C, if you keep pressing the button, is the rear. So I can have sound wherever I need it, up and down, or if I'm watching a movie. Now this is a DVD player, but it's also radio and does Bluetooth and some other things. But optically, I can take the sound from this TV and it's already running to the back of this. So if I go to zone one, like this, I can rotate the dial till it gets to optical. Somewhere there. One more and I press it. Now, if I turn on this TV, let me grab the remote here. And I go to live TV. I can actually, if I'm in optical mode for these speakers, and that's where we go to the channel scan. And so we come down to channels with your arrow button, say OK. OK is the center button. We go to channel tuning. And from here, from this point, we can say auto tuning and we can start. You can do that on cable TV too as well, you see. So you're doing cable or off the antenna. So we can start just like that. Okay. Turn down the sound. We're going to let that scan. So a couple more things I'm going to look at here. Uh, safety wise, I've got a fire extinguisher by the door. I've got a smoke detector here on the ceiling area and right in the back bedroom down below. Right here, I've got an LP CO detector and I've got an outlet here. All, most of the outlets have a USB charger on them. This little panel here is my 120 volt breakers. Right below us, my 12 volt fuses for the coach, so any lights, fans, and things like that. Uh, this is a charger section, so this is actually the section that's charging up the house batteries when we're plugged in or have the generator running. And over here is the spider control, 
and these are breakers that can be reset, call those aircraft breakers. So if I have a light or a fan that's not working or a furnace, I may come back and check and make sure those are not tripped. They'll pop out just a little bit and I can come back and reset them. And this is the network uh, system here that's actually networked to these panels that you see up here in the bedroom in the kitchen and so forth. I do have a light master switch there so I can turn that on and off. On your thermostat, the bottom button will change the mode for you. So when I press a button, so you can see that I can operate the temperature here and then pressing this bottom mode will, uh, button will take me to high fan, low fan, cool. I, can, I do have a heat pump in this which is the electric heat, the gas, and then back to cool. Um, but uh, So I got a lot of option there. We have storage in here in this closet. But we also have the high chairs. These are actually the extension or the high chairs for the front seats when you spin those around because you're going to need some lift in those chairs so that your legs are not up because the floor is raised here and then the seats are dropped down. And so you're going to need that extra cushion. So these are good to use for that. Pop these back in. In the bedroom here, when you want to make this bed up, if you want a full bed here, you can just lift up this panel and go all the way down, just like this. And once you have this down, you can fill up the space with your cushions on each side. So that makes the large uh, king size bed. So we're going to pull this back up so this just comes up, flips around, and back it on. Also, the use is a nice sitting area. We have drawers here that open and close. They have a soft close feature on them, so they'll close by themselves. Um, just all the storage up here. These lights actually, to operate these lights, you press the button, you touch it one time, gives you a night light for the blue light if you don't want to wake up somebody sleeping beside you, and then press it again to get the bright light, and then one more time to turn everything off. This is an exit window here, so if you need to safety get out. That's how you push the window out. You can pull the screen out here. Other than that, we have jealousy style windows that we can just turn and twist and open up and get our ventilation. So I have a vent fan here in the back. Okay. So the vent fan, you just turn the dial to open up the lid, operate the speeds over here on the right hand side. So we have a vent fan here and in the bedroom. This is a fuse case it would blow you would need to change that little four amp fuse out and then you have all the blinds that you pull down and pull it again to ratchet it your toilet is a ceramic toilet and down to add water I've got a water pump switch right here for my convenience hold it down partially just to add water and then all the way down to flush okay Make sure all the hot water is out of each side. So what I want to do is turn on my water heater and show you how that works. I'm going to take these, these toppers and put them over here. I'm going to run out the, the hot water. Make sure there's no air in that line there. Uh, sorry, the controls are back here on this. So we have to look in the bedroom. We sort of missed that up in the cabinet here. So a lot of controls going on. We have our water heater control. We talked about that outside. I'm going to actually go to comfort mode, which is the first notch that you see. So I'm going to dial this up. You see a solid yellow light come on. Now it's actually lighting up outside. It's going to heat that water and circulate it to all the taps inside the coach. And that's the comfort mode. And so it's going to have hot water available and ready for you to take a hot shower with very little delay between you getting water and turning on the faucet. Um, the other mode is the eco mode. It only turns on and heats the water when you turn on the faucet. So you can see the difference there is that you have to wait a little longer to get your hot water. But either mode will continuously heat the hot water as you turn on the faucet. And so you can take a really long shower or have hot water all the time available. That does run off of LP. And we have another position down here, which is a cleaning mode at the very bottom. Uh, if you accidentally go down to the cleaning mode within 30 seconds, you need to go back to off. The cleaning mode is actually, uh, it's, it's there so that you can put cleaning tablets in the filter outside and that's a three hour tour. So when you get it to 
cleaning mode and you put it in that, it's going to be locked out for three hours so you won't be able to use it. But uh, they recommend once a year or so to clean that with the cleaning tablets. You can get those at all your RV centers. Uh, the next mode here, right beside the off, is the DC heater mode, which we don't have that on these heaters installed. So ignore that. And for the most part, you're not going to go down to clean uh, unless you're going to clean that once a year. So we're going to go back up to comfort mode and we'll let that heat our water up. The one right above it is our satellite control. So my satellite receiver that you see over here on the right um, has its power plugged into the back. And when I turn that on, that's going to operate the satellite. You hear it running on the dome, on the roof. And so that's searching the sky right now, trying to find to locate the satellite in the sky and lock into it. When that locks in, it's going to send a signal down to the receiver that we have here, the satellite receiver. The signal's going to come out of that and then be able to go over to your televisions. So when I turn on my TV, let me grab the remote back in the front. So when I turn on my TV, and I actually go using the connector button. If I go up to, um, in this case, HDMI number two is going to be the Dish Network satellite receiver. And so that's how that works. And so I can go to any of those inputs. Now, when I go to the DVD player, that's actually going to play a DVD through this unit right here. And so I just pop a DVD in. So there's nothing turned on right now for it, and I'll be able to play that. But I'm going to go back to my local TV for now and turn that off. When you're using the Dish Network or the Direct TV, you do have to get service through those providers. So uh, the number will come up on your screen for Dish Network. Just call the 1 800 number, and then they can set this receiver up to an account of your very own, and you can have satellite TV that's an in-motion satellite so even when you drive you'll be able to watch t satellite TV on these TVs in motion uh, I'm actually going to show you here to I'm going to show you the inverter this is the inverter control and when I want the inverter on I push in that button that's the on off button and so if I'm just sitting here and I don't have shore power plugged in or I'm not running the generator I can turn that on and run my TVs and run my satellite equipment in here and some of the outlets in here in my microwave and so I can dry camp off of the batteries for a little while and then until I need to charge the batteries back up. Now the house batteries charge a bunch of, bunch of different ways. They will charge plugged into shore power, they'll charge around the generator, they'll also charge when you drive down the road and they'll charge off of the solar panel that we have mounted on the ceiling on the roof and you're going to see here I can touch the B button gives me the voltage it's the same voltage that's up on the house batteries here I can press it again and I'm getting the number of amps that are coming into the batteries now right now it's zero because I'm covered up and also I, uh, I don't need a charge the batteries are fully charged so I don't need that so this is self-regulating it's going to regulate the charge into your batteries and that's what it does so basically the B button is the one that you want to scroll through and be able to see. So when we see that accumulated amp hours, that's the number of amp hours that are accumulated over a period of time, okay? And so that's what you're looking at right there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to flooded batteries right there. There we go. Okay, so let me turn off the satellite here. When I travel right now, I'm not wanting it on. If I wanted to run my generator, I could turn on that red button generator display comes up and you can see I've got 19 hours on it they've run it at tipping quite a bit we've run it on the lot a few hours just to verify that everything works under a load and I have changed the oil on this so when this gets to 20 hours which it will real fast uh, when it gets to 20 hours you're gonna have a display that says check engine oil and to clear out that display all you have to do is hold down the start button and that will clear out it won't come up again for that break-in period of 20 hours. So what we're gonna do now, we'll reach over here. I'm gonna turn off the air conditions. So start, before starting my generator up, I wanna turn off the heavy loads, which is the air condition and the microwave. So if I had those running, I would turn them off. I'm gonna press this button, turn on power. I'm gonna hold down the start button. And there you go, generator starts up. 
in a few seconds that power will switch over to the inside of the coach and I'll be able to dry camp and run things off the generator if I'm out dry camping or in the boonies. So there we go. And that's how you start up your generator. Now, once you add your loads and you're running on the generator, when you go to shut the generator down, turn off your loads again. Turn off the air condition, shut off the microwave if it's running, and then hit stop right over here on the left side. That'll turn off your generator. I wanted to make sure too that when I was watching local TV that I have this on antenna. When I'm watching cable TV outside and I've got that cable plugged in, I can just switch it just like you do right there. And you'll see a button up here. This is just merely for access to a bunch of wiring and harnesses and things that are going on in the background below this panel that you see. So this is also the power plug right here for the receiver if you ever need to unplug it. You can unplug it on the back of the receiver too as well. We're gonna lock that in. Lock that. So we're getting our hot water and it should come through. Let me make sure we check this again here. There we go. Just takes a little pressure. That way he can see it works. And then uh, the gaskets get stuck on those sometimes when they get hot. One thing you can do is spray a little silicone spray on the gasket up top when it's open, and that way it won't stick. I'm gonna turn this back on, get, try to get some air conditioning again. There we go. The shower, uh, you simply wanna, it has a retractable shower door. And we wanna latch it right there. Push it in when you want to unlatch it, and it's spring-loaded, so it's going to go all the way back to the coach. We've got a nice shower, and then we got a shut-off. Once we get the water to the temperature that we really like it, and uh, there's the hot water already. So you can see how quickly we get it at the shower. There's no waiting hardly. And that's going to put out hot water, and I can mix that a little bit, and that's going to stay pretty consistent the whole time I need to shower. So by the way, if you're taking a super long shower, it wouldn't hurt to go open up your gray valve outside, and that way you can get uh, get those tanks empty. Now I'm going to open this door. I've got a magnet here. Connect the heater products to the bathroom area. So when you're showering or using the bathroom, you can flip that all around. On the air condition, when you open up these, that's going to give you and dump all the cold air out of these vents right here to this area. So that's called a quick cool. If you shut it. It's going to push the air condition through the ductwork throughout the coaches. These are the return filters. These you pull down, you clean, you wash and reuse them, and put them back in. They come down just like this. Pop those down. You can take one side down. If I can get it down. <laughs> Love it. You pop it out, wash it, dry it, reuse it. The refrigerator on this is the DC refrigerator, so it runs off of 12 volts, and the uh, the fridge is a compressor. It's a compressor-driven fridge. It's 12 volts, but it and that's the nice thing about that is uh, it cools down really fast. So in a couple of hours, uh, this thing will be cold enough inside to start putting your food in and be able to use. So give it a couple of hours, uh, and you've got just a just a couple of buttons on here. You've got a temperature button that you can. All the way over to the right is the coldest. And then at nighttime, you can actually put it in a nighttime mode like this, and it will use less power at night because you're not opening and closing the door like you would be during the day. And when you're using it, it'll actually go and cycle down to a lower power usage so you don't use so much of your battery, especially if you're dry camping. Um, another exit window here behind the behind the lounge chairs or behind the theater seating. So I'm actually electrically running that thing down and I've got USB chargers on the side of it here. But uh, you can see another exit window there. And I can prop it open like that too to get air if I just need to. And that's how that works. More light like we had in the, in the bathroom. This is the curtain that we got from outside. This is the privacy curtain that goes inside and when I hold this up, you'll see there's actually two hooks on it. One hook goes here, 
the other hook goes on the other side, and you put the curtain up around the window, you run the visors down, and it goes behind the visors. Real simple setup, real easy to do once you get the hang of it. This is a nice insulated lined uh, cover, really going to keep the heat out and as well give you privacy. Okay. Another sleeping area here that we can just pull down and then we have an extension ladder that we can hook on here and uh, be able to get in and out of there. Those are lights. Push the button on the center there. There's also a control over here when you go to lights and you have those on, you'll be able to turn those on and off up here as well. back up so we don't bonk our head real good. Show you a couple of things here. I have a central vac on board, so I'm going to open that up and pull that out. There's a little cap here that you can put on it. I have a lever here that I can pull and lock that, so now I can uh, turn on the vacuum. Clean, clean up my coat where I need to be. There's also outside are some vacuum attachments, so I can attach the long wand to that, the crevice tool, be able to use those. So you don't have to carry a lot of stuff with you when you want to clean up your coach. I'm going to flip that back. This is a vinyl floor, so it does clean up real nice and easy. You can just use something real simple like a paper towel and some cleaner if you spill something on it. Get that up. Put the cap back on it. We're good to go here. We got an extension here for prepping our food when we want to. Uh, have extra space to do that kind of thing. I've got all the remotes for my TVs here. I've got three TVs, one outside. I've got a remote for my Dish Network. And I've also got a remote for this Jensen radio. So I can turn it on and off from my living room here and be able to have my radio. So we're gonna look at the stove here. It's real simple. It runs off of LP outside. We have to have the LP turned on. I'm gonna rotate the valve, the lighter up, and then I can adjust my flame, high and low. Just be, it, be aware that when I turn on the gas with these gas valves, I am letting gas into the burner, into the coach. So when you're done cooking, make sure you turn these off and they're in the off position so you don't have any LP that's coming in. But uh, real simple, there's a piezo igniter here, electronic igniter, and there we go. Electronic igniter here. I don't know if you can see that flame through the camera. There we go. Anytime you're operating the, uh, the range top, you want to crack the windows open just a little bit here. Get you some air inside of here because you're using up your oxygen. And never try to use this to heat your coach up. You have a furnace on the air conditioning controls for that. Uh, so it's not a bad idea when you're cooking as well to just crack open the vent here and then crack the window open to get some fresh air in, also to pull out any odors, any smoke, steam, things you might have. So let's talk about driving our coach. Um, here we've got our key fobs. We have a lot of key fobs, a couple extra spares. Uh, this key fob has a, a mechanical key on the back of it in case we can't get in with a key fob. We can always open the door on the driver's side with a manual key. But you want to have the key fob in your pocket or have it up here in this location. Or if the key fob is not reading, you can reach down and put it in its home position right there. We slide it in. It'll usually read it every time there. And so we're just going to put it up here. I've got a lot more keys for you. I'm going to step on the brake and uh, we're going to start the engine up. You'll see it started up. On the left is my diesel fuel gauge. On the right is my temperature gauge, I got my tack, I got my speedo here, and you got your mileage here. Now we have a 707 miles because they drive these all the way from Red Bay, Alabama. You can see I'm in park. I can shift it down to drive by pulling down on the stick there. I have a paddle shifter so I can manually hold it in the gear, like fourth gear there, and then go throughout the gears if I want to. So this gets me, I can manually shift it like a sports car if I need to. Uh, so we're going to go to reverse. When I hit reverse, you can see I get a nice view on my camera there. I can change the way that looks. I can break it up into segments. I can do a, a fisheye view. And then that view is going to be looking pretty much straight down at the hitch. So it's a really nice high resolution camera when I need it. So when I go back to drive, 
if I'm driving along and I got the radio on here, if I want to, if I'm in the parking lot, I want to see the reverse camera, I can just hit this button here. It's going to give me a reverse camera. I can go real slow and back up. Back up, it's going to come on anyway. But when I start going up at speed, this is going to go off because they don't want you viewing that driving at high speed. And so that's for safety. I can use these, what I call them dumb buttons. We can use these manual buttons down here to go to things we need, like navigation or their quick buttons, radio, that sort of thing. Okay, so we're going to talk about the buttons here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. So the buttons on the left-hand side of the steering wheel are designed, everything's designed to keep your eyes on the road ahead of you for safety. So I have a home position. I'm going to press that. You can see I get a menu on my screen. Now what I'm going to do is slide this button over. That's actually my little thumb mouse. And I'm going to press that button for the service. And I can slide it down to look at the dev fluid. I can go back. I can slide it down to look at the oil level. And then I go back. You can also look at Assist Plus and it tells you you can do the service A in 704 days. Uh, you can go down and look at the particle filter on the exhaust as well and look and see what the particle, the diesel particle filter is doing and how the load looks on it. Uh, now we're going to go back to home and you can also have drive assist. A drive assist, what that will do for you is you can actually adjust that with this button once you're in that mode, high and low, and I'm driving down the road. And if I have the cruise control, the cruise is set here with the on-off button. You can see it on the display and then I just press up to set it. So once I'm at cruise, if I get too close to the car in front of me, it's going to take off the cruise on the drive assist. It's going to take off the cruise. It's going to put the brake on for me. And it's going to maintain that distance that I have set up with this button here that you see. A couple of more things that this unit will do for you. You have keep lane assist. So if you get off on the white lines on the road, your steering wheel is going to vibrate and it'll also apply some brake for you to wake you up and get you back in the lane you need to be in. Um, there's also uh, anti-rollover sensors, there's airbags, side curtain airbags, there's ones in your seats. Uh, so there's airbag here, airbag over here in the front. Okay. What can I do for you? So anytime you say, hey Mercedes in this coach, it's gonna prompt you, it's gonna prompt you for help. And so you can actually turn that option on and off until you're used to it, if you keep saying Mercedes. So you can operate your cruise control here, and then you can set it, and then you can resume or you can cancel the cruise there. It also will cancel when you hit the brake, just like any cruise would. I'm going to release the steering wheel, tilt it, or telescope it where I need it to be. Put it on your arm link. Go back down to drive. When you want to go back to park, really all you have to do is stop, press in on park, and pull your parking brake. When you release it, you lift back on it, push the button and hold it, and go down. You'll feel the resistance as you go down, and you want the, the red light to go off. This is the hardest thing with the Mercedes is to take off the parking brake because a lot of people grab it and they just go down with it, and that's not going to take the brake off. You actually want to pull back down with the button. You want to watch the light as you do this to make sure that light goes off. We're going to pull it back on, but the, the handle is designed so you can fold it out of the way when you rotate the seats like we did earlier. So that's going to do that for you. So keeping back to the steering wheel here, I have more buttons on the right hand side and those are primarily for the operation of the MBUX design radio and screen here. And that's what they call it, M-B-U-X. I'm going to press home. It takes me to this home screen. I can scan over, and you can see I'm moving there from the satellite. Press home. I go back over to radio. And the radio also, when I go back to radio here, you see I have Sirius XM. And you're going to get some channels here. And I'm just scanning through those either here. You can also do them here on the screen. Just like that. Me? Or does it hurt somebody who's living paycheck? Just like that. We're going to go back to home position, which I can do here as well. And we're going to scan back over. One of the things you can do here is on your media, you can Bluetooth your phone to this. 
and you can also Bluetooth your music to it. You can also connect it through the USB. Now the radio on this, and up front they use the micro USB-C cables for this, so you might need to get you an adapter cable for your phone, but this also has induction charging up on there if your phone offers that. So you can pop your phone up in there on the induction pad and charge up your phone. <clears throat> but there's also another charger down below. There's another jack here. And then there's 12 volts here. If you want to use a 12 volt adapter, you can. So we're going to go back to this screen that you see here. One of the things that we can look at is the information on our engine. So as we're looking at the engine, we can go to engine get a lot more details about what's happening with our engine as far as engine torque, oil pressures, uh, temperatures, and uh, voltages, that sort of thing. So we can look at the performance of our engine. Fuel consumption, we can actually map that out if we need to. And we can also look at the owner's manual when we're stopped still. So we can actually go into the owner's manual and look up something like our oil change or look up what type of oil we're using and, and that sort of thing. So we can do a search on this and then we can say, OIL, we'll look at the oil replacement amount, yes, the capacity, yes, every bit of this is touch screen when I get my fingers to work. And so there we are. So there's the menu, there's the manual on screen right there. So we can look at the viscosity of the engine and tell what type of oil to use right there. So it's very, very handy, but it's primarily used when you're stopped. They don't want you using that. They block it out when you drive. There's some other apps you can do. You can hook up your smartphone to this device and incorporate. You can do Apple CarPlay on this and some other uh, apps that you might have on your phone that you want to use on the screen. Web browser there too. We have settings. So a lot of these settings for the coach itself is uh, we can go to system and we can turn off that uh, Ling Lingotronic there and that's the Hey Mercedes. We can turn that on and off if you need to. You can go through here. There's a lot of other options for the voice and that sort of thing. So we're going to go back. You can change things with your lighting on your coach. So you can customize this coach, change the interior lighting, the exterior lighting. Some of the vehicle stuff, you can lock some of the doors automatically. Uh, some of the assistant stuff. See, we have keep lane assist. We also have the active brake assist, which is what we were looking at there earlier. Uh, the attention assist, uh, so we can set that. That's just standard to a standard attention, and we're going to slide over. And also, you can hook up your phone Bluetooth. So here's where you connect your phone. Put your phone in Bluetooth mode, and you're going to look for Mbox 75394 on your phone, and that's how you pair the two up together and just allow the pairing, allow your contacts. So we're going to go back home with that. If you want to turn off the radio, press and hold this right button on the bottom and then press that. So your radio is off. You're going to turn it back on here. Or if you want to mute the radio, just press that one time or press and hold that like that. If you just want the display off while you're playing the radio, you can do that. Still have the sound playing in the background. So that'll mute it there or press and hold it. Display is off, but I still got the sound with no display, so you might want that for no distraction. Okay, we're going to turn that off. Washer wipers, uh, really cool thing about these wipers, when I push this in, you can see about every inch is a distribution of water. These are really nice wipers, so you get a nice complete wiper system on this, which is really good. So you got left and right cameras as well. So not only do you have a backup camera, but on the mirrors or down below the mirrors, you have a left and right camera. So I'll be able to see the lane out beside me. I'll be able to see that blind spot as I drive. So that's a handy thing to have right there. On your controls on your air condition, this is fan speed. This is temperature. You can see that I'm dialing it up and down. There's the fan speed. There's my flashers for the coach, so I turn off my flashers here. And there's a recirculate button there for the air conditioning, and I can direct where I want the air to go. When you want to sh open and close the vent, you just simply twist it. These were taken from the E-Class Mercedes. Okay, Lots of cup holders up front, uh, up here up top. We have two buttons that I want to show you. We have an SOS button. 
So if you need any kind of first responder, like a fireman, police, ambulance, pop that down. Hit OS, SOS, that'll connect you in with Mercedes operator, and she can call and get the help that you need in the event of emergency. We also have one on the right over here, which has got a wrench on it. That will get you into Mercedes mechanical service. So if you have a breakdown or you need gas or you need a jump start or something like that, you can press that and they'll be able to give you roadside assistance help. Put my glasses in here, sunglasses. And then I have these buttons here to be able to turn on my dome lights. And I'm going to leave that one on because that comes on with the door. Take, take these little clips out. I'm going to take these clips out here. So that these are shipping clips so that we can turn these visors around and be able to use them on the side. There we go. So we got storage here. We got cup holders in the door, up top, here in the front. So a lot of places to put cups if we need to. These are just blanks. There's no switches here on these on the left and the right. But you could add other options of lights and things that you might need. Okay, that concludes our walkthrough, and we're going to shut her down. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions on content you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about that. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Vod RV.